Hello and welcome to the January 2013 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's monthly threat update. My name is Johannes Ulrich, recording here in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, you probably notice uh, that we are using a little bit uh, different uh, format and platform for uh, this uh, webcast uh, compared to our other webcasts. In the past, we used a platform called Illuminate. It's Java based and we keep telling people uh, to uh, turn off and disable Java, but uh, then we sort of ask you to use Java in order to listen about our webcast that tell you how to turn it off. Well, uh, now with this new format, we use uh, just a recorded a screencast. We are able to offer that in a number of uh, different formats. In addition, uh, this uh, webcast is split into two parts. As first part, we'll talk about uh, Microsoft patches. The second part, we'll talk about hardening OS 10. Well, uh, you only have to listen to the part that you're really interested in. We'll offer it as uh, two uh, distinct uh, videos so you don't have to listen to the entire thing. With that, uh, let's get started with uh, Microsoft patches. We got a total of uh, seven patches, two of which are rated critical. The remainder is rated important. In addition, of course, uh, we do have uh, the Internet Explorer a survey vulnerability that has not been patched yet. And uh, we'll talk about uh, that as well after we went over the different uh, bulletins. The first bulletin Microsoft released this year, MS-13-1, describes a vulnerability in the print spooler service. Now, uh, the print spooler is used uh, to uh, share tr printers uh, on the network. Actually, it's also used locally in order uh, to uh, feed uh, print uh, data uh, to a printer. But in this case, uh, you're in particular vulnerable if you expose the print spooler on the network. We uh, got a little bit pushback here and understandably so that we rate this as doesn't apply to a a client but then again in our definition of server and client client means there is no service running on that system you could very well have a plain vanilla Windows 7 install on a desktop enable printer sharing and then you are vulnerable here and that's a very common scenario in offices where you have a printer connected to a random workstation and then that workstation acts as a printer server server. Probably the best mitigating part here is that uh, any sane network would block external access uh, to a print server like this. Of course, you're still vulnerable internally uh, in this uh, case. Based on the fact that uh, this is actually exploitable across a network, uh, this is actually you know one of these vulnerabilities you do want uh, to expedite uh, somewhat in patching it and uh, again like I usually say first you know, make sure that you have a good inventory of all of these print servers just to make sure that you don't have any unauthorized uh, print servers because uh, that uh, happens again uh, fairly easily. Next, we got MS-13 to a vulnerability in the XML core services. The XML core services are used in Windows to parse XML. So uh, more or less uh, any software that parses XML using these libraries is vulnerable. Now, the part that uh, makes exploitation here possible and easy is that Internet Explorer uses these uh, libraries, of course. And uh, for example, if you have JavaScript uh, that uh, parses XML, then uh, this library is used and a simple exploit uh, for uh, this vulnerability would uh, likely uh, use a web page with JavaScript that uh, parses some malicious XML. On the server, it uh, could also affect a software that's installed on the server that parses XML. Uh, one uh, part here that is uh, pointed out uh, by Microsoft, the bulletin is a SharePoint. For example, uh, someone uh, could uh, upload an XML document uh, to a SharePoint site, then it's being parsed using this library. Uh, same, of course, uh, with Office. But then again, the most likely uh, vector here is 
Internet Explorer. And uh, that's uh, why I think this is probably the most uh, critical uh, vulnerability in this particular set of patches. MS13.3, this bulletin covers a vulnerability in the System Center Operations Manager. Now, this is software probably only few of you have to deal with. It's, for example, used to manage Microsoft's cloud platform. The interface for System Center Operations Manager is HTML based. And in this case, a cross-site scripting flaw in the user interface can be used to then take over an administrator account the administrator would have to be logged in and then uh, while they're logged in they have to click on a malicious link that would then include the cross-site scripting code that then takes control of the user's uh, browser once an attacker has control of the browser, they then, of course, uh, could inject commands and manipulate uh, the system center operation manager at will, more or less. So if you run the software, uh, take a look at it, and uh, you probably want to patch it, but I wouldn't uh, really assign this an, a high priority. Next, we have an elevation of privileges of vulnerability in .NET, and uh, this is a bulletin MS13 for Microsoft rates is as important, uh, we do as well. Now, uh, there are uh, two different uh, exploit vectors here, depending on whether the exploit is targeting a client or a server. In order to target a, ser a client, the user would have to download a crafted uh, XBAP file, which are these uh, .NET applets uh, that you can uh, download uh, from uh, websites then of course uh, this applet would then trigger the privilege escalation on the server the user would have to have access to upload it on net application so uh, this really affects a more shared hosting environments uh, where you have users that are allowed uh, to upload dot uh, net application to the server but uh, you're trying uh, to restrict what it can do using these uh, code access security restrictions which can then be bypassed uh, using this particular vulnerability. This one I rate actually more important to client than this server because I think the server use case is somewhat limited here. But for clients, of course, this would be a logical follow on exploit after, for example, an attacker gained normal user access using the XML vulnerability or another in Explorer vulnerability. Well, and MS13.5, an old favorite, not really much to say about this anymore. Kernel mode drivers, of course, this is a privilege escalation vulnerability, cannot be exploited remotely, but uh, can be used to gain system access by any user logged into the system. Bulletin MS13.6 is about a security bypass problem with SSL. In this particular case, it's about downgrading a connection from SSL version 3 or TLS to SSL version 2. SSL version 2, of course, has some known issues, should no longer be used and uh, if an attacker is able to downgrade an SSL version 3 connection to SSL version 2, then of course they could play man in the middle. Initially, when I first saw this, I thought it's uh, you know something like with compression, like the uh, crime vulnerability or the beast vulnerability, but this is different. It's really just a plain downgrade of the connection. There's also a valid workaround here. In your system, you can just turn off SSL version 2, of course, in order to prevent uh, this particular exploit. It has to happen on both sides, the server and the client. Uh, you have to disable SSL version 2. Standard best practices to not allow SSL version 2 on web servers, but a lot of clients uh, still support. You really should uh, turn it off. There is no great reason to leave it enabled and you're leaving yourself uh, vulnerable, not just to this vulnerability, but also to badly configured servers. And finally, we got a bulletin MS13.7, and this is a vulnerability in the 
open data protocol and well it's just a denial of service vulnerability of course as usual denial of service uh, may be critical to you if this is a critical service uh, that your business uh, relies on now uh, odata or open data is used a lot by web applications uh, with is and uh, microsoft provides this uh, windows communication foundation library which uh, makes it really easy to write web services that use uh, odata in particular at risk here is the replace function that improperly sanitizes data so the real problem here is if you have any publicly facing web apps that are using these uh, windows communication foundation libraries to provide open data services then you are at risk of a denial of service now the update here actually just uh, turns off uh, the replace function so what's the order in which uh, i recommend applying uh, these uh, patches the uh, first two ms13 2 and 1 are uh, the two bulletins that really stick out here uh, xml core services of course is the most exposed here via internet explorer the print spooler of course uh, with its network component uh, makes uh, this uh, sort of one of the uh, patches that you do want to expedite the remaining patches there isn't really sort of a uh, real uh, strict order here i rated the kernel mode drivers first because now that's a recurring issue they're known uh, exploits for older versions of uh, this uh, th these types of vulnerabilities so very likely that we'll see something uh, pretty uh, soon pop up here system center of course uh, but uh, that only affects a few of you uh, next the .NET elevation of privileges which is not that important because it first requires access uh, to the server these uh, shared server environments are probably the ones that want to prioritize uh, the .NET elevation of privileges a bit more SSL uh, not a huge issue uh, turn off SL version 2 and apply the patch and then finally OData if you are using a web service that actually does support OData and uh, uses Microsoft's libraries to provide this service now the real news here was in some ways the news we didn't get and uh, that's a patch for this in an explorer flaw cve 2012-4792 this flaw was first publicly seen in an attack against uh, the council of foreign relations uh, website and these attacks are sometimes uh, described as watering hole attacks because uh, they essentially target a specific audiences now uh, the uh, website was compromised and uh, then some malicious javascript was placed on the site that took advantage of this particular flaw beyond this more targeted attack we also now have a metasploit module making uh, this vulnerability accessible uh, to really the masses of script kiddies out there that uh, would like to take advantage of it now let's talk a little bit about uh, how this vulnerability exactly works the root cause is a flaw in javascript and how it is uh, being parsed uh, by in an explorer it is a use after free vulnerability what that means is that in javascript in this case you can define an element then essentially uh, no longer use it you undefine it but uh, this find default element function will still return uh, this element even though it is no longer used so this is this use after free bug and the way you exploit it is then of course by planting a shell code in that memory the problem you have is that modern operating systems use address space uh, randomization and uh, with that you don't really have control as an attacker where this memory exactly ends up now uh, there is a trick that's commonly used in order to make these exploits reliable and that's referred to as heap spring heap is essentially the memory that you have in your system and heap spring tries to fill up as much of that memory as possible so now the space that's available for the exploit code 
is limited. In uh, this particular exploit, a flash uh, was used in order to accomplish the heap spray, but uh, more recently versions of uh, this exploit uh, were released that actually no longer need uh, this heap spraying technique in order to make the exploit reliable. There are a couple of uh, workarounds that you can apply if, well, since we don't have a patch really available yet here. First of all, of course, the obvious is to upgrade to Internet Explorer 9 or 10. 10, of course, is the default uh, version with uh, Windows 8, and it should be possible to upgrade to 9 or 10 for Vista or Windows 7 users. Windows XP, you're pretty much stuck with Internet Explorer 8. The next best thing you can do is apply the Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit or EMIT. Uh, this uh, will help you against an entire range of vulnerabilities. So it doesn't just help with this vulnerability. It will, for example, detect heap spraying uh, being used. There are some problems that have been reported with this toolkits, uh, like false positives, uh, where heap spraying is being detected even though uh, there is actually no heap spraying going on. For example, you just uh, have a process that uh, uses a lot of memory. That can lead uh, to some of these uh, false uh, positives. But I highly recommend that you give it a try because this is really a better uh, workaround than the fix it that Microsoft released. The fix it that Microsoft released really just prevents this one particular vulnerability from being exploited and it's not even perfect at doing that. Emit, on the other hand, will allow you to protect yourself against the classes of vulnerabilities so even future vulnerabilities may be blocked by it while the fix it really just helps against this one vulnerability and then again uh, this uh, vulnerability, this fix it can be bypassed even though I don't think the bypass technique itself has been made uh, public yet. So short summary on this, apply the fix it, apply emit, if possible upgrade to Internet Explorer 10, definitely get rid of Windows XP if you can because it really shows its age as uh, some of these uh, vulnerabilities here uh, show and well let's hope that Microsoft will come up with an official patch pretty quickly for this vulnerability. Well, this is the first part of our monthly threat update. If you have any questions, handlers at sans.edu or just go to our website iac.sans.edu and use the contact form. And if you're interested, there is a second part to this webcast about hardening OS X Mountain Lion, and you should see a link to it right at the bottom of this video.